Janik Sinner showcased his resilience and skill on Monday night, overcoming American Tommy Paul to secure his place in the U.S. Open quarterfinals with a 7-6, 3-7-6, 5-6-1 victory at Arthur Ashe Stadium. The 23-year-old Italian, currently ranked world number one, demonstrated his mental fortitude by clawing back from two breaks down in the first set, ultimately extending his match-winning streak to eight. This victory also marked Sinner's return to the U.S. Open quarterfinals, a stage he last reached in 2022. The win was significant not only because of the tough opponent he faced in Paul, the number 14 seed, but also due to the challenging conditions on the court. Both players struggled to find their rhythm amidst breezy and windy weather, leading to a match that Sinner himself admitted was far from their best tennis. Yet, when it mattered most, Sinner delivered, particularly in the tiebreaks of the first two sets, showcasing the kind of clutch play that has characterized his rise to the top of the tennis world. I felt like we both didn't play our best tennis, Sinner reflected in his on-court interview after the match. It was a little breezy, a little windy, so we tried to find our rhythm a little bit. I found it a little bit at the end of the match, but I can be very proud today. It was a tough opponent, so I'm very happy to be in the next round. The win sets up a highly anticipated quarterfinal clash with Russia's Daniil Medvedev, the 2021 US Open champion and current no. 5 seed who earlier in the day had breezed past Portugal's Nuno Borges 6-0, 6-1, 6-3. The matchup between Sinner and Medvedev has the feel of a final, with both players being the only major champions left in the men's singles draw. The two have a storied rivalry, with Medvedev leading their head-to-head 7-5, though Sinner has won five of their last six encounters, including a dramatic comeback from two sets down to win his first Grand Slam title at the Australian Open earlier this year. Tough match. It's going to be a lot of rallies, so hopefully, I'll, be ready physically, Sinner said when asked about the upcoming showdown with Medvedev. It's going to be, a, physical match, also, a, mental match. Medvedev, aware of the challenge Sinner poses, spoke candidly before the Italian's match with Paul, acknowledging the difficulty of facing someone with whom he's had such close contests. I will try to think more about Wimbledon than the Australian Open, Medvedev said with a smile, referring to his recent five-set victory over Sinner in the Wimbledon quarterfinals in July. But against Janik, we had some tough matches except a couple. I feel like in a way we know our game, what we will try to bring on the table, and then it comes to always, you know, this moment's deuce, break point, maybe try to surprise him or not, what he will do, what I will do. Hopefully, yeah, if it's him who wins against Tommy, hopefully we can have a great match. I know if I want to beat him, I need to be at my best, which I managed to do a couple of times, it's going to be a great match. Sinner's journey to the U.S. Open quarterfinals has not been without its challenges. His previous appearance in the 2022 quarterfinals was marked by a marathon match against Carlos Alcaraz, which ended in a 5-hour, 15-minute battle that set the record for the latest finish in U.S. Open history, concluding at 2.50 a.m. Eastern Time Sinner had a match point in the fourth set but ultimately fell to Alcaraz, who went on to win his first Grand Slam title at just 19 years old. Against Paul, Sinner found himself in a difficult position early on, as the 27-year-old American surged to a 4-1 lead in the first set, fueled by an 11-point streak that had the New York crowd roaring. However, Sinner quickly regrouped, winning 12 of the next 14 points to level the set at 4-4 before dominating the tiebreak. The second set was a tighter affair, with both players holding their serve, but once again, Sinner proved his medal in the tiebreak, outlasting Paul to take a two-set lead. In the third set, Sinner broke Paul early with a stunning cross-court forehand winner that the American couldn't reach, and from there, he never looked back, closing out the match in dominant fashion. Paul, who had been hoping to make a deeper run at his home Grand Slam, acknowledged that he missed key opportunities throughout the match. I don't think he played very well to start the match, and then once I got up 4-1, I don't think I started playing very well, Paul said in his post-match press conference. I had opportunities there in the first set obviously, and then opportunities in the second, but he stepped up on the big points and I didn't. I felt like that was kind of the story of the match. While Sinner's focus is firmly on his upcoming match with Medvedev, his run at this year's US Open has been accompanied by a cloud of controversy. On August 20th, news broke of Sinner's involvement in a doping case, in which he tested positive for trace amounts of a banned substance. Despite the positive test results, Sinner avoided suspension, maintaining his innocence and stating that he had done nothing wrong. The case has sparked significant debate within the tennis community, with opinions divided on the fairness of the outcome. One notable figure who has publicly supported Sinner is Rafael Nadal. In an interview with Spanish television show, El Hormiguero, Nadal expressed his belief in Sinner's integrity and the fairness of the ruling. I have a virtue or a flaw, which is that in the end, I usually believe in the good faith of people, Nadal said. I know Sinner. 
I don't believe that Sinner in any case was trying to dope. Also, another thing, in the end justice is justice, and I don't think that we should only like justice, only when things are resolved in a manner that we agree with. Nadal continued, in the end, justice is justice, and I believe in justice, and I believe in the bodies that have to make the decisions and that they truly make them based on what they believe is right. I trust that he wasn't sanctioned because those who judged this case determined quite clearly that there was nothing to sanction. In this case, they've seen very clearly that what was presented wasn't sanctionable. I don't think that just because it is sinner, they wouldn't.